okay, uh, I'm supposed to be the character Neo from the Matrix movies. And you notice I've got my Neo cream jacket on. And I didn't quite get the sunglasses right. And I don't know, I'm desperately in need of a haircut. Nevertheless, um, for the purposes of this video, um, my character's name is Neo, and um, I don't know. Uh, personally, I think uh, Keanu Reeves is uh, either can't act his way out of a paper bag, or he is the consummate gentleman. Um, I don't understand. Well, what else can I tell you? All right, what are we going to talk about? Neo and the Matrix. I mean, it's been, like, it's an old series of movies. I, I don't know. It was, like, 20 years ago, the first Matrix movie, I'm going to guess. And um, uh, it was made by the Wachowski brothers, who now are the Wachowski sisters. They became transgendered, and they changed their sex appeal. Um, Keanu Reeves, uh, when he was a very young actor in Toronto, made some publicity um, pictures where he got into one of those old-fashioned photo booths that didn't, it wasn't a digital picture, it was the old-fashioned ones that used photographic paper. And you just put your money into the machine, and the machine would take snapshots, a series of snapshots of you inside the booth. These pictures, uh, I haven't looked for a long time, but they were available on the internet. And it's Keanu Reeves, uh, a young Keanu Reeves, um, kissing another man on the lips or something. Keanu Reeves is also famous for playing the gay hustler in My Own Private Idaho with <clears throat> the young actor that died at the Viper Room, Johnny Depp's bar in uh, somewhere around Hollywood. Um, what else can I tell you? I think Keanu Reeves is boyfriend material, I mean, for any self-respecting gay man or something. I, I don't know. I think he would, he's, he's fabulously rich. Um, he's relatively handsome, even in his old age. And um, I don't know, he seems pretty fit. What else could you ask for? Uh, as far as what I can tell you about The Matrix, uh, apparently The Matrix is a documentary on planet Earth. So it's not a sci-fi, it's actually a documentary on planet Earth, the way it is. And uh, the idea is, um, well, in various scenes of The Matrix, they show uh, green numbers tumbling down which signifies, I've covered this material before, in lectures before, but it signifies the fact that um, everything in our reality is information. And the numbers signify data or data. So everything is informational. And um, what else can I tell you about that? Um, sometimes you can see odd um, matrix glitches in your reality just things that are just goo goo so you can look up matrix glitches and mandela effect which is just people remember certain events differently than others like who was involved and when it happened um, if you study uh, the work of Stuart Wilde he really went heavy duty into the matrix he said he watched the matrix movies multiple multiple times because he thought there was all kinds of metaphysical mumbo-jumbo he could learn from watching the Matrix movies. And, you know, people wrote books about the Matrix movies. Um, 
Is reality a simulation? Uh, that's what the Matrix is all about. Re reality is a, some kind of a simulated reality. It's not really real. Um, uh, there is no spoon, was what the little boy outside of the Oracle's office in the Matrix said, and he made a spoon bend. Um, James Twyman, many years ago, maybe it was 20 years ago, um, uh, used to have what was known as the spoon bending course. So you could sign up for the course and you could learn how to do spoon, spoon bending on your own. I think spoon bending might have been invented by uh, the Israeli psychic Yuri Geller. Stuart Wilde uh, said multiple times that uh, he and his group of people sometimes saw humans dematerialize and other times he saw people walk through walls. This was tried by General Stubblebine in uh, a movie called The Men Who Stare at Goats, which starred uh, George Clooney. Um, a very good movie, very interesting movie, uh, mind-expanding movie. And um, how do you get to the point where you can um, walk through walls and bend spoons? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have not seen anyone uh, walk through walls or dematerialize. Yes, I have. One time when I was uh, outside the old football stadium on Hastings Street in Vancouver, Canada, there was a concert there and I was outside of the arena, outside of the area where they let people in. And I looked across the crowd of people and I saw one human that was only half materialized into our super holographic reality. I looked at them and I went, there's something wrong with that person. And it took me a second and I said, it appears that only half of that person is materialized into our reality. I didn't go up too close. I just noted it as being uh, highly bizarre, but it just looked too weird, too weird. Um, I have seen weird things in our reality that uh, you're gonna have to throw away all your science because I can't explain it. Uh, one time I saw a UFO up hanging around by the moon and um, then when I was looking at it with binoculars I looked at the UFO and I, and I couldn't see it really too much up close it was um, well, it was definitely up there for hours and hours hanging up around where the moon was and I looked at the moon and it looked like there was um, a big chunk of the moon like somebody had it wasn't teeth marks but it looked like somebody had bit a big chunk of the moon out. The moon shape was wrong. Another time I was looking at the moon uh, with binoculars and it sure looked to me like there were clouds behind the moon. How can there be clouds behind the moon? Somebody said it was just an optical illusion. I don't know. I looked at it. It was very clear with binoculars and um, it sure looked like, I mean, I, I've seen clouds in front of the moon before, and uh, these clouds looked like they were behind the moon. But uh, things are not solid in our reality, despite everything that you might think about, because, you know, it sure looks like a solid body to me, solid sunglasses. But, um, Anyways, uh, what else have I seen that's odd? Uh, I've seen, I haven't seen people actually disappear, but I've looked and seen that there were some people there and a very short time later, let's say a minute later, uh, the people had disappeared. 
multiple times. It was just like there was nowhere for them to go. And I'm looking in the general direction where they were, and they're not there anymore. One time, um, I was at an employment office, and there was a young guy, maybe 26 years old, and he was very friendly, oddly friendly for my city. People are just not as friendly as this particular person. I mean, generally people in my city, they don't bother you. You know, if you're at Walmart, um, you know, they're pretty much, you know, if they notice they're in your way, they'll move their cart. But they don't go out of their way to talk to you. And, uh, you know, if you're coming in, you're coming down the aisle one direction and they're coming the other, other way, uh, it's just a natural thing to go over to your side and let each other go by. And we don't do too much talking. But anyway, I was in this employment office waiting for my uh, appointment. And this 26-year-old young guy was very friendly. It wasn't like a gay thing. It was... Um, he started talking about extraterrestrials, which I find very interesting. It's just very bizarre. He didn't disappear. I just was really struck because he said, you know, he'd met extraterrestrials. And um, his energy, you know, I'm very empathic. And reading his energy, um, he wasn't lying. I'm very good judge of character, and I can tell. I've got a great bullshit detector. This young man was very, very unusual for my city. The energy that he was exuding was uh, friendly, and he wasn't lying. I just know. I get gut feelings about when people are lying and bullshitting, and I don't usually don't like bullshitting people. Even for a joke, I don't like, you know, unless I know you, you know, I don't like you to, you know, initially meet me and then start lying to me. You know, just, it's just bullshit. No, it means you're a, you're a liar. I don't like you. This one, uh, he didn't give off that vibe. He said he had met extraterrestrials and I, I was kind of flabbergasted because all of my bullshit detectors were saying, this guy's not lying. Anyways, what else can I tell you about the Matrix? The Marengovian uh, had a, a lecture for Keanu Reeves about you need to have a purpose. And um, what is my purpose? My purpose is different than most people on planet Earth. Uh, it's mostly um, hidden, my purpose. Who is it hidden from? Uh, me. There is a term in Buddhism called Dharma. And you might remember an old TV show called Dharma and Greg. It was very cute. Dharma was kind of a new age girl. And Greg was kind of a, came from a more very conservative, rich family. It was kind of a culture class. But Dharma is kind of like your purpose. And um, one time I asked uh, the Ascended Master, Sananda, through the trance channel uh, about my Dharma, and I can't remember what he said. Uh, but, you know, what is my Dharma, my purpose, my reason to be here? Uh, it's pretty much a service to everyone. Now, I do get hit up quite a bit at the karaoke bars by people who have run out of money and, um, you know, they're looking for money for buying more beer. And um, I don't give it to them. Uh, so it's not like I am, you know, like uh, doling out money to random people. I don't do that kind of service. The service I do is mostly hidden service in that um, being someone who is uh, exceptionally bizarre, I consider myself to be a light worker and I am all about helping people raise their consciousness and um, uh, 
uh, transmuting negative energies. How does that benefit everyone? Uh, it makes it easier for people to raise their consciousness. Uh, if you've got uh, people who are light workers around you and who are committed to uh, changing society, modernizing it, uh, it, it needs so much modernizing. So much stuff that we've inherited over the generations uh, is just low vibe crap. So that's why I make my videos. Uh, I, the Arcturian Council, who are non-physical, uh, maybe ninth dimensional uh, beings that are channeled by Daniel Scranton on YouTube, uh, once said, don't worry about, you know, if it doesn't appear that very many people are watching your videos. It, they said it is simply your intention to put it out there that puts it into the collective consciousness of humanity. So uh, basically what I got from that is just make your videos and put them up on YouTube and Instagram and um, don't worry about the number of views because the Arcturian said it, that's what they said. They said it's just your intention to put it out there to humanity uh, and my um, so that's what I do. I talk and I put it out there and they're generally topics that if I try to talk to uh, uh, a number of my friends who are very 3D people, um, uh, usually they want to change the, t the topic to um, drinking beer and going to um, Las Vegas and drinking lots of beer and shots and then going to, um, I don't know, wherever you go when you're drunk. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't always find too many people in the physical humans that uh, are interested in topics I'm interested in. Um, so uh, I just find it easier to talk to my phone and put them on YouTube than try and find people that want to listen to me. And, you know, sometimes I do come across people that find me mildly interesting. Uh, and the problem is that... Um, I have a hard time conducting a conversation with people because, um, as you can see, I got verbal diarrhea. In other words, I just love to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And um, uh, I've got spirit guides that love to talk too. So if I'm not talking, they're going to jump in and talk. And if a human comes along and wants to talk to me in a conversation, I've got to remind the spirit guides to shut up. And they don't want to shut up because if I'm not talking, they'll talk. And um, there's lots of spirit guides around me. And so they all want to have the stage, the floor, um, when it's their turn. And if their human walks in and wants to dominate the conversation, in other words, even say like 10 words, uh, they get annoyed. And, um, you know, so I've got the spirit guides talking to me and then I got the human talking to me and I have a very hard time focusing on uh, conversations with humans unless the spirit guides uh, are obliging to allow me to. Uh, and, you know, for generally things like if I'm you know, ordering food or, you know, I'm the minimal inter interactions I have with humans, like at a checkout counter or something, uh, they'll go quiet. And then when I'm doing lectures, generally speaking, they will go very quiet and Sometimes I forget they're there until I, you know, I hit stop and then they start talking again. Uh, so, you know, if you see me and you want to have a conversation with me, um, uh, I find it incredibly difficult because I just cannot focus on you, the human, and all the spirit guides who are talking to me at the same time. I'm just not capable of multitasking uh, multiple conversations and you know unless you're highly psychic and empathic like me you're not going to hear my spirit guides talking but I can hear them and um, they can hear me and um, they get bloody annoyed when it's their turn to talk and some human decides to butt into their conversation with me oh it happens all the time and then you know uh, humans are like why are you so distracted and it's because, well, I'm talking to extraterrestrials. My spirit guides, I mean, I call them spirit guides for, you know, 
there's not good words for people, but I told you uh, when I was in Vancouver, I used to go and see the ascended master Sananda. Sananda didn't just materialize in an, an apartment. There was a person who would go and meditate very quietly and um, close uh, his eyes. And then uh, Sananda would come uh, into the room and we could feel the energy change in the room. And then as the Sananda personality would start talking through the body that, belo that belongs to the trans channel. Uh, so it's not unusual for people to channel. As I said, Daniel Scranton does the same thing. He connects to the Arcturian Council and then they talk with a different voice than Daniel through Daniel's body. And this is what my extraterrestrials do. Um, they uh, talk to me. And if you're not on their wavelength, you're, if you're not psychic, uh, you're not going to hear them. But they're talking. And they are people. And they, uh, just like people, they don't like to be interrupted. It, despite the fact that you can't hear them having a conversation with me, they're having a very long conversation that, you know, we have topics that we talk about for uh, months and if they're in the middle of talking and you come along and interrupt their conversation with me they get pissed off they get really pissed off and they'll start insulting you you won't hear them insult you but they'll start insulting you you know they'll just they'll they'll pick out you'll say you know look at this one and I mean when was the last time they changed their shirt they're wearing uh, they're wearing yesterday's lunch on their shirt you know, and they need a haircut, and, um, you know, they basically will insult you, and you can't hear it, but I can hear it, and sometimes I, I get very embarrassed, because, you know, they get very off color, they get very off color, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed, because, you know, I try not to laugh, or, go, like, you know, talk out loud, so they'll hear me and say, um, you know, cut it out there's somebody here that wants to talk and you know the human can't tell but the extraterrestrials that are on my frequency uh, uh, they don't care about your conversation because they know that uh, 90 99.9 percent .9 of humans are egoic twits run by monkey mind and they tell the same stories over and over again about the same stupid topics and my extraterrestrial friends don't want to know anything about all that stuff they're not interested in that kind of stuff they've got their own topics that we've been talking about for a very long time and each individual cosmic character has got their own subjects that they like to talk about and if there's one cosmic character talking and they don't like it then they go away and do something else but when it's their turn to talk and they're in the middle of a conversation and somebody comes in and butts in and they're human, they're going to be like, uh, you got to go outside. Just make an excuse and go outside. So, uh, and I have to go because they get very insistent. And, um, you know, I just have to like, you know, get up and say, excuse me, I got to go to the bathroom or something. And I got to disappear for a little while because I'm, I'm in the middle of a conversation with extraterrestrials. Where do I go from this? Uh, Neo is kind of like a Jesus-like character. Uh, you know, savior of the world. Stuart Wilde, the metaphysical writer, uh, even on his website, stuartwilde.com, talks about the returned Jesus. It's I don't know if it's actually a personality of Jesus. He's, he often says it's like an energy. And he says that Krishna, the Indian god, or is it Shiva? It's either maybe it's Shiva. Might be she. It's Shiva or Krishna. I can't remember which one. I have to look it up again. Uh, and the returned Jesus have a very similar energy signature. An energy signature is um, what an empath um, feels when you walk around, and um, it's not something that the average human knows about, but you have an energy signature that uh, is all you. 
and it's highly recognizable to psychic empaths like me. And so anyway, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, anyway, that, so that Stuart Wilde just said that uh, Jesus, the return Jesus, and um, this Indian Hindu god have a very similar energy. Uh, they went in the same, uh, Stuart Wilde kind of felt like it was the same energy, and he didn't know, like, you know, uh, in Hindu uh, mythology and Hindu religion, um, the gods take on uh, different incarnations. So, you know, there's like Vishnu, and I can't remember all of the things, but it's just basically, they're different humans that are incarnated on the planet, but they are incarnations of a Hindu god. So there, that's why there are so many different names of Hindu gods, because sometimes one Hindu god takes on multiple incarnations as humans. Plus there's all kinds of other gods. It's like an unbelievably complex pantheon, which means a multiplicity of um, aspects of what they call God. And, it, and there's different schools of thought in, in Hinduism, and it is an unbelievably complicated thing, and I'm no expert at it. But I did tell you about energy signatures, and every personality on the planet has got an energy signature that is highly recognizable by higher consciousness and higher dimensional beings and psychic people like yours truly. Yours truly means me. When are you going to be able to read energy signatures and become an empathic and signature, uh, and signature <laughs> able to? No, that's the wrong with psychic. Um, if you want to have uh, these kind of gifts open up to you, um, you have to um, do the spiritual work to get them, which is uh, you have to uh, meditate, like I say in almost every one of my lectures, every day for great long periods of time, and um, you have to throw away your ego, and that means that you have to um, allow the spirit to run your uh, life, and to do that, uh, you have to uh, stop trying to be like all the other people on the planet. In Yogananda's book, Autobiography of a Yogi, you should read that book if you're at all interested in opening up your spiritual gifts. Autobiography of a Yogi, I showed you to you in another video recently. It is uh, this one. And uh, Apple founder, Apple Computer Company Corporation, founder Steve Jobs, uh, loved to read this book. And he recommended it to people. He read it every year or two, reread it. And the, uh, if you want to know about real life Superman, people who have superpowers like Superman in the comic books, you can read Autobiography of a Yogi. And the way that you get uh, superpowers is you have to become a yogi. And you can read the stories about the miraculous things that happen to people who are yogis and people who are on spiritual paths. In other words, they um, want to be like Yogananda. Which means uh, you have to be very much uh, about higher love love for all beings, love for humanity, and not so much about, um, you know, me and my personal needs. Your personal needs um, will be what you really need. It's like the Rolling Stone song. You can't always get what you want, but if you try some time, you just might find you can get what you need. And that's the way higher consciousness beings get what they need because higher consciousness does it all automatically for them by synchronicity and serendipity and um, just being open to being of service to others and allowing earth coincidence control office to arrange coincidences for you and uh, chance meetings that other people think are chance meetings uh, earth coincidence control office would uh, actually arrange 
uh, apparently ascended masters also arrange for certain um, events and incidents to happen to you uh, for learning purposes. Um, I don't know. I probably could talk about uh, more Neo things, but not right now. I don't think I've talked enough. Uh, so um, this has been... I don't know. I need a new character name. And it's really cheesy if I start calling myself Neo when I'm dressed in neoprene jackets. You can hear the noise that it's making. Is it leather or neoprene? I think it's neoprene. I can't be 100% sure, but it sure feels more like neoprene than leather. Uh, I do need to get a haircut this week. I don't know. You can tell around my ears the hair starts growing down too much. And, um,. I hope I covered everything I can for you for now all about the Matrix and the Wachowski sisters. Um, are they shapeshifters? I mean, shapeshifters are able to change from human to, I don't know, on Harry Potter, some of the professors at Hogwarts could change from their shapeshifters. They change from a human form to an animal form. So is it a really big deal if the Wachowski brothers change from male to female? Well, I can't do it, but you know, maybe it's a spiritual gift, or maybe they saw a high-priced plastic surgeon. Uh, oh my God! Uh, I don't want to do it that way. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, Wachowski brothers are also famous for the Netflix TV show Sense Eight, which is about you living your life as a person, and then starting they getting some kind of a gift where you can start. Uh, experiencing, life, experiencing life through other people's bodies. Sense8. Rumpelstiltskin, my former associate, uh, called the same uh, thing as what they were doing in Sense8. He called it ass-ticking. It wasn't anything to do about your rear end. It was it was more like fantastic. Fantastic. Astic at the end of fantastic. And Asticking was basically the same thing they do in Sense8. And it's kind of, is it like channeling? No, it's more like they secretly um, they secretly just um, watch life through your eyes and your ears and, you know, is it demonic possession? Uh, it might be considered a walk-in. You can look up walk-ins. In other words, walking in, their spirit form walks into the body that's already here. And um, would you know if they walked in? Um, if they wanted you to know they were there, uh, they would let you know. Uh, if you weren't a psychic or empathic, you might not know that they had walked in to do an Aztec or a Sensate. Um, generally speaking, I know pretty much Never, if someone is asticking me. But sometimes uh, I get the feeling that uh, certain people are, and they're, it's stupid because it's usually humans that I have no idea uh, have the ability to astic. So I think it's people um, that have the ability and they like to uh, play jokes on me because I'm a silly human uh, who... very very silly human and you know i hope you like my comedy act i hope you like my crazy offbeat humor and my really weird subjects because uh they are definitely novel and uh, please share my video with all of your people who like really offbeat things people like geeks might like what uh, i do and people who really like uh, sci-fi uh, psychic things ufos extraterrestrials uh, superpowers um higher consciousnesses, uh, yogis, um, Fortean kind of things. Charles Fort was a specialist in the past on uh, unexplainable anom anomalies. anomalies. Uh, Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, used to have a TV show called, uh, no, it was Captain Kirk that had uh, Weird or What, but uh, in, in Search Of. In Search of with Leonard Nimoy was about odd things on planet Earth. And one of the episodes of um, 
the Star Trek movies, the original series movies, was In Search of Spock. So Leonard Nimoy had a TV show where he wasn't Mr. Spock, he was Leonard Nimoy, and he went in search of mysteries like uh, the fallen continent of Atlantis, for example, In Search of, period, that was all, that was just called In Search of, and then the Star Trek movie, the original series movie, was called In Search of Spock. Do you see? That's an inside cute thing or something. I gotta go. Gotta go.